Good. How are you? Good, good. I love your pink stripes. So heaven for a Monday. I'm trying a little uh, pink, uh, pink Monday. I love it. Yeah, it's my first. Of, it's my first day of holiday today. Hey! <laughs> but I doubt you get so, to like go anywhere fun or have a a holiday adventure. Yeah, we're gonna um, just travel around in like a van because of <gasps> Corona. Obviously, we can't travel anywhere outside of Norway, so yes. we're just gonna like explore Norway a little bit. Lucky you live in one of the coolest countries in the world that is an interesting place to go around in a van. Like there are much worse places to be stuck than Norway. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah. That is probably I mean, It sounds like someone's <laughs> hammering in the background. <laughs> the joys of working from home, am I right? Absolutely. <laughs> I was um chatting to someone in a FaceTime this week and I um didn't realize my dog was in the room. And we were talking and for some reason I said the word walk during this FaceTime interview and my dog heard the oh, word walk and was like losing her shit behind me. And I was like, she was off. so excited. It was like the magic <laughs> word. Um, well, first of all, Dagny, welcome to Ash London Live. I didn't do a proper uh, welcome. So thank you for making time to chat with us. Thank you. Likewise. Um, so you should know um, that I personally am a massive fangirl. And I never say that to artists because, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and, you know, you interview everybody. But I, like, really <laughs> am, like, creepily obsessed with your music. Um, <laughs> so it's extra special. So I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Like, I'm not going to try and pretend Thank to be you. all, like, cool and shit. I'll just be honest, oh, right? That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah no, that's really it's nice. totally Thank true. You. We recently had um had our holiday. We had a week off. Me and um my executive producer of the show was my best friend. So we went on holiday together. Like left our husbands. And we were like, see ya. And um <laughs> our holiday anthem, as chosen by me, was "Love You Like That" because I'm obsessed with it. And it got to the point where like we'd be going down the freeway in Byron Bay, and I'd be like again and i'd like play it even though it's an old song like i know it's old so you have a special place in our heart it's like the holiday anthem of the one week off we got in 2020 but that's so cool because when i make music sometimes like the the image that i have in my head is for some reason i don't know how it like ever ended up being that but it's like if i can picture if, if i'm writing a song and i can picture myself being on a road trip or driving driving down some like highway or coastline or something that I'm like, okay, we're onto something. We're onto something. <laughs> it's so true. It's <laughs> no, so I, true. I, I, does that mean that when you're in your <laughs> camper van going through Norway in the next couple of weeks, like does it work the reverse? Like does being on a road trip on a nice coastline inspire you to then like write music? It definitely it does. Yeah. But I haven't actually, I haven't actually been on a road trip like that for a long time. Cause I, when I finished school back in 2000 and something, uh, it's a while, it's a while ago now, then those years after I, I spent a lot of time traveling around and I did like a coast to coast in the U S and, uh, interrail in, in, uh, in Europe. And I love the, I love that way of, of, um, traveling because there's such a freedom to it you can like take a turn wherever you want and just go wherever the wind blows you and like when you live with like a schedule all the time it's nice to sometimes just you know go with the flow totally. and so when I, I remember like very vividly that when I came back from that trip in the U.S. like those weeks after I was so like inspired and creative so hopefully you know this this road trip will, will do the same and yeah maybe I'll just get started on you or something why not <laughs> and another really exciting thing is happening um to you that's already happened to me it was the best thing that ever happened to me and it happened about four years ago and that is that I turned 30 and I was like fucking bring on the 30s it is yeah. the best thing in the world so I'm not gonna be able to speak to you on your birthday so happy birthday that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's that's super nice to hear that because I feel like everyone is always freaking out about turning thirty. But I think I've always like thought that the thirties must be like so amazing, and it's I so I love having a birthday. And yeah, see, 
I'm going to remember you said that like when I, it's finally my birthday. It's oh yeah. And I mean, so. it. it's like you get to your thirties and people say it happens again at your forties, which is so exciting, but you get to your thirties and you're like, oh, like the twenties is for being an idiot and making all your mistakes. But the thirties, it's like, you know, better. And you start to like take more control and say no more and not worry so mm. much about what other people think. It's magic. Mm. Oh, it's the it's the best. And you've achieved so much already. Like that's it's so crazy to me that you're still in your 20s, but if you look back at the last decade in your 20s, I mean you could mm. it's hard to pick a favorite memory or something that's like the big mm. standout. But is there one defining moment of your 20s where you feel like it was like the tipping point where everything changed for you whether it's like personally or career-wise? Well, I think I think there's like two things that I keep coming back to. And it's um, when I decided to move from my home city of Tromsø in northern Norway, which is a, a pretty s- small city, uh, very far away, it feels like, from mm. everything. Uh, and I moved from Tromsø to uh, London. And it wasn't like a very conscious decision, like now I'm going to go there and I'm going to do this and this and this. It was more like, oh, I just got to do something. And I was advent- like, I wanted to be adventurous and experience something new and London just kind of you know um just kind of happened in a weird way and it ended up being like pretty life-changing in terms of a lot of the stuff that I've learned from you like in music and a lot of the growing that I did as a musician and also a lot of the kind of becoming more independent and stuff that all happened during those years um and then I would say that the other moment was probably um even however cliche it's it was probably when we released Backbeat, which was my first single, because it was just at a point where I was kind of ready to give up really on music and kind of go home and study. And I felt like I wasn't really going anywhere. And then the last few months, I, you know, before I released it, we just decided to bring the band into studio, just do our own thing, not really think about, you know, what everyone else wanted us to do or what the label thought. And we just ended up having such a great time and Backbeat was just released as this random thing we had no plan with it whatsoever and then it ended up just changing kind of everything yeah. really it's still the so, single that is so synonymous with you even though it was so many years ago and you've had so many you know <laughs> popular singles since then that's still huge that's magic and it, it's so often you hear that it's like I was just about to give up and then yeah. <laughs> when I stopped giving a shit and stopped putting so much pressure on myself the universe mm. showed up or the, the right song showed up. That's so magic. I love that. Yeah. I think that's important to like remember for any like emerging artist or singer songwriter to be, or it's like, there's all these, you, there are all these rules that you can think, Oh, I need to do this or this, or, you know, this is what people are into right mm. now. Or, 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 and people, and people kind of, you know, try and tell you as if they know, but I feel like in music, nobody really knows. And then Yay. suddenly something happens. Yeah. And and I think it's the minute when you start to listen to yourself and just do your thing. I mean, even Backbeat, not that it was like a massive, massive world smash or whatever, but it was it was so different from everything that was out there at the time. And, you know, I didn't really think that it was going to, that anything would come of it. But it was something that I was really excited about and, and my band was really excited so about. Cool. And, and I think that kind of come through, you know. Mm. How have you kept way. that, like that spirit and that trust over your career? Because obviously you learned a lesson there, like do what feels right, trust yourself. (laughs) Has it been hard to maintain that attitude as you get more popular and the kind of pressure, the stakes get higher or whatever? I think it's harder. I think sometimes it's harder because, you know, I feel like I still have so much to learn. So equally much as I want to be in the studio and be like, listen, guys, I have this great idea. Let's go with that. It's also like, like I just get inspired by others and I'm trying to soak up as much knowledge as I can and learn new things. So sometimes there's definitely times where I'm in the studio and and it wasn't necessarily something that, you know, I thought we were going to end up doing or kind of a sound. Uh, but I just got inspired because it was new to me too. So some So there's like a fine line between kind of constantly learning but also kind of stand up for whatever you think is... is uh, um, oh, this this is a vibe, you know. Let's totally. just go with it. 
Totally. Yeah. And now somebody's out in the world. And you know what? I love the acoustic version so much as well. Like I want to play both of them. They sound like two different songs almost. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's true maybe, yeah. I, I've never th- thought about it, but it's – it's. I, I love doing the acoustic versions because it's a song, you know, we've kind of done it with all the singles and you get to hear a song in such a di- different – it's like suddenly with somebody – it becomes like even more like sad almost. Totally. When you do the acute thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like or a like, yearning, not like a, I don't know, I want someone. But now it's like, <laughs> you're like I yeah. feel it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Maybe someone out there needed it to feel a bit more like that too. It would be good. There you yeah. go. No? And are you going to, um, obviously, when you're allowed to travel, which may be in like 50 years, who knows, but obviously you will come <laughs> to Australia, right? I would love, I would love to. Yeah. I can't believe I still haven't been there. I, as your number one Australian fan, Dagny, I still can't believe you haven't been here. Rude. Well, you just have to promise me that like, whenever I come there, you're going to be your, like front row of my concert. Try and stop me. You? I will push teenagers out <laughs> of the way. I don't care. I will like elbow people. <laughs> no. Um, we, I will be at whatever show you do, I'll be at it because I honestly really do love you and I'm so happy that we've got new Dagny playing on the radio every night. It makes me so happy. I'm being very selfish about it. I don't even care. But there's That's lots nice. of love. That's very nice. Thank you. There's lots of love for you mm. here, darling. Um, well, thank you for making time to chat with us here in Australia and enjoy your birthday and enjoy your time off. I hope you're inspired. I hope you have lots of fun and stay safe and healthy, my friend. Thank you. So lovely to talk to you. Great to talk and, uh, to you. I'll see you in Australia. Great. Yeah, hopefully very soon. I'll be the one front row with a sign throwing my bra on the stage at some point while my husband is standing next <laughs> okay. to me in Ballarat. I'll, I'll hold you <laughs> <laughs> See you, my darling friend. Bye. Bye.